Hello Booktube, my name is Kate and this is my channel Chapter Kate. This video is actually going to be the first video in a series that I've decided to start called The Power of Words or POW for short. In these videos I'm going to be talking about different words, the impact they have on people, and how to change our language when it comes to certain subjects and certain situations. Now you might be asking what do these videos have to do with books? You're a booktube channel, why are you doing this? Well, I'm also a mental health professional. I work in a psychiatric hospital. I lead groups consistently on things like communication skills, um, socialization, things like that. And also, what are books filled with? Words. We're words people. It's time that we learn to use our words more responsibly. In this video, I'm going to be talking primarily about assertiveness. Now, there are several different communication styles, including being passive, aggressive, passive aggressive, and then assertive. And in this video, I'm also going to be teaching you how to incorporate assertiveness into your conversation styles um, and how to use it to help solve conflicts that may arise in your life. Booktube is a community like any other community online and we can easily get carried away in certain um, conflicts that may be very important to some people and may be less important to some people. Um, but this is a way to sort of get through those conflicts in a more productive manner um, rather than just kind of getting caught up in the the frustration and all the um, conflict itself. Now to start off I want to talk about other communication styles besides assertiveness and what they mean. The first is being passive. Um, a passive communication style means that you primarily um, you don't really stand up for yourself. You kind of let someone else if they have a will that is stronger than yours you just kind of let them do what they want. Um, and when you're when you are passive you might have an issue with somebody or something and you might just let it go and not say anything a lot of times this happens because we you know experience stress or anxiety in conflict or because we don't really care about meeting our own needs we just you know care about making people happy or making people like us when you are passive within a relationship or within an interaction with someone else what you're basically telling them or telling the situation is that I don't care about my needs I only care about your needs um, and usually what ends up resulting from that is that your own needs in the situation are not met and theirs are. Um, there's a lot of ways to show that you're passive um, by not setting boundaries with people, not standing up for yourself, obviously not standing up for other people. Um, when there's an issue, you just kind of back away and you don't kind of speak your mind when it comes to things like that. Oftentimes people that use the passive sort of communication style kind of found that speaking up didn't actually work for them um, and that getting by was a lot easier if they just stayed quiet and didn't speak their mind. So that's why they kind of became more passive. The second communication style I want to discuss is aggressive. So the aggressive communication style is when you decide to automatically go on the offensive when you see something that you don't like um, or something that you feel like can be improved. In a conflict, people with an aggressive communication style are usually the first to speak up and they don't just speak up to get you know a need met, they speak up and they kind of go on attack mode. Um, for example, you might have a conflict with a roommate about, you know, cleaning the dishes or something. Someone who is aggressive may immediately go personal with it and say, you're so lazy, you never do anything, and they're always kind of pointing the finger at everything um, instead of communicating in a more respectful way. It's just, you always do this, you always do that. They use a lot of really broad, generalizing terms. They make one incident kind of a huge this was always this way, you never do this, you always do this, um, things like that. They use those kinds of all or nothing statements. Instead of just focusing on the situation at hand, they kind of bring all this other stuff into it usually and they might attack the person for other things. Oh, and you also just think you're so much better than me and you also don't care about me, you don't take care of things, you don't do this, you don't do that. And instead of just focusing again on what is in front of them, they kind of bring in all these other personal things. Um, and a lot of times what they're doing is they're trying to get their needs met, but they are not paying attention to the other person's needs. Um, and they're usually more very emotional communicators. And people that are aggressive communicators are typically like this because they found that that helps them get to where they want to get and it helps them um, solve conflict. It has worked for them at some point in the past and so that's what they stick with. Now when you, like I said before, when you're aggressive you're basically telling the other person that you do not care about them, you only care about what you need out of the situation. Now the third communication style is one that a lot of people have heard of and that is being passive aggressive and generally this one happens a lot when you're in a really close relationship with someone um, because often you, do, you don't want to address the issue head on uh, but you do hang on to the resentment anyway. So if I go back to my previous example and I have a roommate that doesn't do their dishes, um, instead of addressing it aggressively, I don't, I don't say anything at first. I appear passive at first, I might not say anything, but I might make small little rem remarks here and there that 
um, are stinging and that they are and they're harmful. Um, but I never actually communicate what's going on until um, I get to the point where I'm so angry and worked up that it goes into that being aggressive state. When you're passive aggressive, you're essentially saying, um, I don't care about getting my needs met, so I'm not you know, communicating my needs. I don't care about your feelings at all either, or I wouldn't be saying all these mean things or making these little jabs at you. Um, you're basically not getting, no one's going to be satisfied with that. People that are passive aggressive, um, I feel like in my experience are people that have found that neither pa being passive nor being aggressive has worked for them. So they kind of do a combination of both. They don't want to address the matter immediately because they have usually an avoidance of conflict but they do want it to get out there they do hang on to that agitation and that resentment that's inside it just grows and builds until they explode and then the fourth communication style which is the whole point of this video is assertiveness when you are assertive you state your needs in a respectful manner when you communicate assertively with somebody you state your needs and um your qualms with the situation in a respectful manner that way the person is listening to what you have to say rather than the emotion behind what you have to say um but you are stating what you need and you, they are hearing you say these things when you are assertive you typically use i statements so if i go back to my example of the dishes rather than saying nothing or going I mean, being aggressive or being passive aggressive i might say when you don't do this i feel like you don't care about our home when you don't do this i feel like all the responsibility is kind of on me and that causes me stress when you're assertive you're kind of talking about how it's affecting you rather than pointing a blame at someone else and you're doing it respectfully you're not raising your voice you're not you know cursing shouting at someone or all that all that stuff because that's going to take away from the message that you're trying to get across which is i need this to happen to improve the situation or to improve our relationship now i want to talk about the positives and negatives of each of these communication styles so if you are passive the positive is you don't have to deal with any conflict so that's nice i guess um oftentimes the goal is that you want people to like you the negatives are that you're gonna eventually realize that nothing's going your way and that you're not getting anything that you need out of these situations with aggressive um you're gonna realize that you're pushing people away by always being on the offense um you, a lot of times it, there's a lot of turmoil in those relationships um the positive is that in the moment you feel like you are getting what you need to get because you're stating what you need to state um and being passive aggressive there's not really a positive to that because you're you're, you're never talking about what you need and the other person is going to feel that anger towards them with your little small jabs and things like that sarcasm stuff like that well assertiveness there's not a negative ideally ideally there are no negatives the positives are that you're getting your needs met but you're also respecting the other person so that way a conversation can be started about whatever the issue is um the negatives to being assertive is that it's often not natural for a lot of people. So people have to learn it and it can be uncomfortable at first for you communicating it and for the people that you're communicating with. Because if they're not used to you being assertive, then they're going to think, oh, something's different. Either they're mad or maybe they're, you know, going to be, maybe they're just not themselves. They're going to see a change and they're not going to be comfortable at first. If they're used to communicating with you a certain way, people might not be comfortable with that assertiveness, especially if you're typically passive. Like I used to be, I grew up very passive. Um, and so I didn't, I didn't speak up for myself a lot. I didn't learn to say no. Um, and occasionally that would dip into passive aggressiveness, but it was usually just me being passive. And then when I went to college, I learned how to be more assertive. And so the people that I had been passive with most of my life, when I decided to start setting boundaries and start being assertive, they thought that I was mad at them and that I had changed and all this stuff. And I had changed. I'd learned to communicate what I needed in a respectful way. And when it comes to these different communication styles, you have to know that different people communicate different ways naturally. Um, different cultures communicate different ways. Um, Part of being assertive is also understanding the perception, how people are seeing you in that moment, um, being aware of how you're seeing other people based on your experiences growing up, based on maybe their experiences, things like that. And you might say, if this person has said something that is hurtful to me, why should I respect them? Why should I say something respectful um, when I'm addressing it? Um, they don't deserve that respect if they're not respecting me. And that's, you know, that's a valid feeling to have. However, if you don't address them assertively they're not going to hear what you're trying to say they're just going to hear the anger behind what you're trying to say and then the situation never gets resolved because they just see you oh now you're angry now they've pinned you as angry not as oh i've hurt them because of the situation or they need this to be 
happening. They're trying to tell me this. They don't hear what you're trying to say because all they do is they hear the anger in your voice when you're being aggressive. Now there's a couple of questions that you might need to ask yourself when you are engaging in some sort of conflict. Not necessarily in a, a way that is you know, arguing or fighting, but in a way that is, you know, addressing a disagreement. The first question you need to ask yourself is, is this worth it? Um, or is this something that I can walk away from and it's not going to bother me later? Um, because if it is worth it and then you walk away from it, you're going to end up being passive aggressive. If it's not worth it and you engage, you could end up regretting it over something small. You could end up ruining a relationship over something that doesn't really matter that much. If you decide that it's worth it and you decide to engage, be very aware of your emotions, their emotions, the different backgrounds that you have, and how you can communicate in a respectful manner. One kind of rule that I always go by if I'm feeling angry um, about a situation is that I step away from it while I'm feeling angry. Um, I go quiet, I separate myself from it, I, you know, log off depending on where the situation is, you know, in your physical world, online, offline, whatever. Um, a good idea is to take a break from it first and process mentally and let your emotions cool down because that way when you do decide to address it, you're going to be more rational. It's really hard to think rationally when we're angry. So just a couple of tips on that. Um, now, I'm not an expert on all of these things. <laughs> I do work in mental health. I do lead groups every day um, at work. However, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to consider myself an absolute expert in communication styles. I don't have a psychology degree. My degree is in music therapy. But in that degree, I did study counseling and psychotherapy. I studied various psych psychology courses, abnormal psych, um, childhood development, special education, things like that. And um, more specific kind of therapeutic courses to do with music therapy. But I also have experience in my everyday life and in what has worked for me. So... It's up to you whether or not you decide to take this information and use it or ignore it or whatever or think that I'm trying to tell you how to talk to people. I'm not. Do what you want. Um, I'm just saying this is something that's worked for me and this could be something that works for you as well. It's also important to get to know yourself and know what your communication style is. What's your sort of default communication style? Um, are you typically passive, aggressive, passive aggressive, or are you assertive? Um, and if you know what your communication style is, go ahead and comment it below. I'm also going to try and leave a quiz so you can kind of find out more about your communication style. And now it's time for a booktuber spotlight. Today's booktuber spotlight goes to Mahalia from Nerd It This Way. Mahalia's got some really great and original content. She's a very caring individual and a lot of times her content is very unique. She has some cool, um, she had, she did some cool like face painting stuff around Halloween and things. She has some cool vlogs going on. Um, but I primarily interact with her on Twitter because that's where I primarily interact with everybody. But recently on Twitter, Mahalia kind of came up with this Twitter tag for booktube where you kind of list six reasons that you joined booktube and then four things that make you feel like you're not really involved in the community or make you feel um, distant in the community. And I think it's just a really cool way to have taken initiative to get this conversation started. Um, so I will link her below as usual, her YouTube channel, but I'm also going to link her tweet below where she started this chain. Um, so that way you can get involved if you would like to because she's really cool and she's got some great content. But that's all for this video. If you would like more of this junk, subscribe below. Bye! Tripping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night I feel the soldiers coming, I'm done pulling up a fight I feel my 